Superman from Krypton to Metropolis. Years ago, out in space, far beyond our own solar system, the giant planet Krypton circled around a huge red sun. Many times larger than Earth, this scientifically advanced world had existed for untold ages. Few Kryptonians believed anything could threaten their peaceful lives. But deep within the core of Krypton, natural forces were at work which would soon doom the thriving planet. One man knew the fate that awaited Krypton. He was Jor-El, that world's greatest scientist and a member of the ruling science council. But knowing the truth was not enough. He still had to convince the unbelieving people of his home world. This was Jor-El's mission on that fateful morning as he walked through the streets of the great city of Kryptonopolis. One thought rang through his mind. This time I must convince the council members of the truth. They have scoffed at me before. This is my last chance. If I fail again, it will be too late for us all. That rumbling sound, it must be another quake. It was distant at first, but it soon grew louder and louder until the ground began to shudder with a quaking that threw many citizens off their feet. The buildings swayed and the streets seemed to groan as they cracked apart. Then, as swiftly as it had begun, the tremor passed. Jor-El looked around to see if any of the people who had fallen needed help. No one seemed badly hurt, but the condition of the once beautiful buildings was getting worse each time the tremor struck. Jor-El frowned and quickened his pace, a fierce glint of determination in his noble eyes. Moments later, Jor-El stood in the great council chamber, ready to address its members. Almost breathless from his haste, he still found the power to speak out in a loud, ringing voice. Our only hope is to build a fleet of giant space arcs to carry us safely to another world. I have searched through my star charts and have found a planet called Earth. Its yellow sun and lesser gravity will give us all powers beyond imagining. We could become a race of supermen. As Jor-El spoke of Krypton's doom, the members of the council grew angrier and angrier. Finally, the council leader would hear no more. He rose to his feet and shouted down at Jor-El. We have heard enough of your nonsense. You disgraced your position on the council with your prophecies of doom. We have found no proof of your wild theory. Yours are simply the ravings of our madman. Satisfied with his rejection of Jor-El's theory, the council leader returned to his seat. Now, barely able to contain his anger, Jor-El made his final plea to the unheeding council. You will have your proof, but by then it will be too late. The planet itself will have exploded from beneath our very feet. With that, Jor-El turned and stalked out of the chamber, his face a mixture of frustration and sorrow. After a time, he turned his steps homeward to tell Lara, his wife, of his failure. To think that a handful of foolish men could condemn a whole planet to a fiery doom. While he spoke, she listened calmly. In her arms, their little son, Kal-El, cooed happily. Why won't they listen to me? He asked her. You've done your best to save them. Since they refuse to accept the truth, at least you can finish building your ship to take some of us to safety. At that instant, another shock hit the city. This one greater than any before. Jor-El's worst fears had come to pass. The end was approaching, and only a small model of his planned spaceship was ready to be launched. Hurry, Lara. Put little Kalel in the ship. Even if we can't save ourselves, we can save our son. Quickly! We have only seconds left.
With the baby securely strapped inside the ship, Jor-El pressed the ignition button that sent it hurtling into space. With tears in his eyes, Jor-El spoke. In a short time, our son will reach the planet Earth. There, he will grow to be mightier than any other being. Let us hope he learns to use his powers wisely for the good of all. On Earth, our son will be a Superman. Even as Jor-El spoke, his warning to the people of Krypton was fulfilled. With an awesome roar, Krypton exploded. But, safe within the space vessel, wrapped in blankets of blue, red, and yellow, the last son of Krypton could not hear the sounds. Little Kal-El was too young to realize his world was no more. Time went by. The small ship passed into another solar system, one with a yellow sun around which several planets revolved. The ship headed directly for the third planet, a world of blue oceans, green vegetation, and great banks of fleecy clouds. The spaceship and its superhuman cargo knifed down through the clouds toward a field outside a town called Smallville in the United States of America. Driving along a country road in their pickup truck, Jonathan and Martha Kent were enjoying a pleasant June day when a roaring sound overhead caught Ma Kent's attention. Looking up, she gasped as she saw a strange red and blue object coming down from the sky. Come over, Jonathan. I don't know what that thing is, but we better stop and see. No telling where it came from. Even as the farmer brought his truck to a screeching stop, the spaceship struck the ground, plowing deeply into the field before coming to a grinding halt. Timidly, the Kents decided to investigate. Leaving their truck, they slowly edged toward the deep gorge made by the rocket. They were amazed. The spacecraft was unharmed, but the canopy had sprung open, and something inside had been thrown out. A baby. Little Kal-El sat on the ground, smiling. Ma Kent gasped. He's adorable. Look, he's sifting sand through his fingers. She was wrong. He was crushing rocks with his bare hands. Ma Kent picked up the child. Oh, Jonathan, we've wanted a baby for so long. Can't we keep him? Not if anyone knew how he got it. Why, Martha, that thing he was in could have come from another planet, for all we know. We'd better hide that rocket and take this abandoned youngster to the local orphanage. You can bet they won't be able to find his family. When they put him up for adoption, we'll be first in line. Several days later, the director of the Smallville Orphanage ushered the Kents into his office. The director felt relieved and thought to himself, eh, They want to adopt that baby. It's okay with me. If I didn't know better, I'd swear that child had some kind of strange powers. Well, these folks can worry about that now. <laughs> Had he or the Kents looked out the window at that moment, they would have seen Kal-El in a swing going all the way around the bar in a complete circle. Not once, but many times. And that was not all. Only the toddlers knew their playmate had now lifted the little merry-go-round they were riding and was twirling it about, giving them a truly super ride. Meanwhile, the orphanage director made his decision. Ah, Mr. and Mrs. Kent, your uh, application seems in order. You understand we generally prefer younger adoptive parents. <laughs> However, in your case, we are willing to make an exception. <laughs> You have our approval. <laughs> to himself, he added, Anything that makes my job easier. I still can't understand why the doctor couldn't vaccinate him. He claims the needle broke. 